Jerry Goff and Carson Wentz are expected to be the first two picks in tonight's NFL draft. Todd McShay released his last big board, and he has Carson Wentz and Jerry Goff, the 10th and 11th ranked players. How concerned should the Rams and Eagles be on using the top picks on these quarterbacks for that? We welcome Herm Edwards to the desk. Herm, we need you here. Well, you're concerned, obviously, if these guys are busts because you've traded away uh, and mortgaged your future. Um, but in the National Football League, you don't have a long future unless you have a quarterback. So you have to understand that. I think both these young men are, are good players. Uh, you would say that they're probably not ready uh, at this point uh, to be inserted in the lineup. Uh, you look at the Rams, uh, it seems like they're going with golf. Um, he's probably in a better place uh, than Wentz. When you look at the Rams football team, how it's built, what they're going to ask this guy to do. Um, Reminds me a lot of Alex Smith in this sense. If he can play like Alex Smith, he'll have a long career because of the team that he plays for, the Rams. And the fact they want to run the ball with Gurley. This team only threw 11 touchdown passes last year. If he can throw about 20 touchdown passes a year, don't turn the ball over. They'll play steady defense. The runner will score anywhere between 10 and 15 touchdowns. They have a chance to win a lot of football games. They were a 79 football team last year, uh, lost three games by a total of 12 points. So I think they look at him that way. We're not going to put too much on his plate. Now, Wentz is in a diff different situation. He goes to a place where this whole football team is being restructured. When you think about it defensively, they went go from a 3-4 to a 4-3. They have some pieces, but they're not all in place. They have an offensive head coach in Doug Peters that, that basically wants to run a West Coast type of offense, wants to run the power. They're going to run the football a little bit more than they have done in the past. Uh, they got a young quarterback. They were hoping that Sam Bradford was going to be the bridge, but it doesn't look like that. I don't know if Sam Bradford's last the whole year. I think he'll be gone by June. This is my personal opinion. We'll see. Uh, then uh, Chase Daniels will have to be that guy. Unless Wentz just blows him out of the water. And all of a sudden, you look at him every day and you watch him in the preseason say, you know what, let's put the guy in there and let's let him play. So I think both young players are in different situations. And, uh, you know, no different than last year. We knew that Jameis Winston and Mariota, now their grades are higher. We, we, we had higher expectations. But they both went to teams that were maybe in transition. And they, they, they survived it. They actually survived they it. Did. Can these guys survive it? Physically, but more than that, mentally. A lot of pressure on the kid in Philly because it's in Philadelphia. Rams, a lot of pressure be taken off that kid because they got Gurley back there. And, and they got a team that's pretty competitive in the division. Not saying Philadelphia can't because the Dallas, you know, Dallas Cowboys were hurt last year. They'll be competitive. The Giants will be better. Washington is Washington. You know, they won the division. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing unfolds. Stephen A. Well, I, you know, when we talk about the concerns uh, of the Rams and the Eagles in terms of their picks, uh, uh, Coach Herm Edwards, you, before you came on for this segment, you, you said, where, where, where does Jared Goff play? University of California. Cap. Yeah. Um, 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 is there a particular quarterback in the NFL right now who's elite that comes from there? Oh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers. What's his name? Aaron Rodgers. That bad? Is that bad, He's man? a bad that man. Really and and, and you know what? You'll man. like this one. I'm going to show you how bad he is. He's the only one out of the 16 now. Well, we'll just say 15 because golf hadn't been drafted yet that actually won a Super Bowl. Mm. Right. That have been drafted so, out of camp. I, I, just, I, just, I knew that, Coach. I just wanted you to say it. Yeah, it's very, a bad man. special to me. No doubt. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bad man. 24th overall in 2005. We understand that here's the difference. Aaron Rodgers came into the league, forget the cushion, being able to sit behind Brett Favre, learn, etc. He also came into the league knowing that he deserved better than what he got in terms of falling so low in that draft. This guy, Jared Goff, may go number one overall. Yes. Now, I've got a friend uh, that, you know, that, that met Jared Goff, okay? Um, <laughs> and he was with his son. And... His son said, Dad, you in better shape than him. Because Jared Goff looked tall. He, he was just tall, uh, but he looked a bit fluffy. That was the word that they fluffy. used. Fluffy. Didn't seem in great shape, etc. We've watched this guy, and what we see is an individual that threw five interceptions against Utah, 
But pro style offense, some of the things he's capable of doing, running, running an offense in the NFL, etc. There are upsides, there are downsides. When we talk about athletic ability, arm strength, etc., we look at Carson Wentz. So there are questions about Jared Goff when you combine that with the fact that he's going to go number one overall in all likelihood, and he's going to be in a market like Los Angeles where they lose interest quick. I think the odds are stacked against him. And I find myself believing that when it comes to the Eagles and the Rams, they're taking a quarterback because that's what they need most. And so as a result, they moved up to take one of these guys as opposed to thinking that either one of them is franchise caliber material. Mm. By the way, just quick point of order here. Yes. Aaron Rodgers, or Arrogant Rodgers, as I now call him, is 3-5 and five in his last eight playoff games. Just for the record, I just want to throw that in just to keep this He's a Super Bowl champion. Yes. He's age, a Super Bowl champion. Ages ago. Now, oh, by the way, that's, 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 skip, 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 hold on. There's another number I want to throw out there. You see the 3-5 and five number you just threw at me? Yeah. Do you know, even though it's a 3-5 and five record since he won that Super Bowl, mm -hmm. those three victories are still one more playoff victory than Tony Romo has had in this, his 10 this years? This is not about Tony Romo, who went I'm undrafted. Just saying. I'm undrafted. just saying. Wow. I'm just saying. He's done pretty well I'm for just undrafted, saying. wouldn't the you say? The man's got two playoff victories okay, in 10 now, years. Now, back to your quote. This was almost akin to the anonymous scout quotes that you hate this time of year. You have now quoted a friend of yours, like his kid or something, saying that... <laughs> I was that, joking about Goff it because it was a joke. Goffy? Okay, it, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just kidding, actually. But but I thought it was funny that, that yeah. he, he, he might be fluffy. I don't know. Yes. I, like I, I don't know fluffy, actually, but, but that's okay. You do. All right. so, Stop it. So, Coach, i got to bring it back. Yep. The point here is that a Todd McShay that I have high regard for we both do. has yes. ranked these players, and he's saying that there are nine players on his board who are more valuable to him in this draft than either of these two quarterbacks. Yeah. And moreover, yes. he's got Goff ranked one slot below Wentz. Right. So he's saying to the L.A. Rams that, hey, not only are you taking an overrated quarterback, you're taking the, the worst of the two overrated quarterbacks, okay, right. just for the record. Right. Now, I, I get what you say. You could put a lot of these quarterbacks in that Rams offense with the Rams defense. They might do okay. Yeah. Paxton Lynch could probably do okay. Connor Cook would do okay, sure. right? That's right. I, I think Cardell Jones could do okay, okay, right? But, but my point is, you've been doing this a long time playing coaching. I've been covering this for a long, long time. In all my time covering drafts, I have never, ever seen a combined gamble like th these combined yeah. gambles where they bet the ranch to go up for two can-miss quarterbacks. Because we're not talking, just Stephen A and I riffed to, uh, to start the show about all the, the sort of can't-miss quarterbacks that went at the top of the draft, starting with John Elway. And, you know, we can go all the way to Aikman and Cam Newton and Andrew Luck, we just go on and on. Michael Vick, all these quarterbacks who were taken high, we, we knew they were going to be, you know, Peyton, obviously, they were all going to be pretty to very good. Yes. And we just knew it. We yes. just knew. It would just be a matter of, will they be this good or this great? Right. But with these two, I, I don't know, man. I just don't know. I, I think they're... They're iffy. Well, we all sit here yeah. and say that. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And, and, you know, last year, it turned out good. Yeah. Because... Winston, oh, no, those two. Winston, I, I, and, 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 but we, we said it. We, we say that. But every year we know that it's very difficult. Rookie quarterback coming in the league. How, how do they handle yep. the mental aspect of it? Okay. Dealing with losing. Okay. Dealing with turning the ball over. That's the critical part. How, how did Peyton Manning, when he threw 27 interceptions his first year, how did he deal with that? Okay. Those are the things. Andrew Luck comes in, he takes a team from 4-12, and 12, and he takes them to 12-4. and four. We don't see that a whole lot. Robert Griffin had that flash. He comes in here and, wow, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what you're gambling on. Yep. We, we don't know. We, we don't know. That is, there's, there's no science to it. We don't know. And then you don't know for a couple years even, so. Got to hope. We shall see. Herm, thank you so much. My Appreciate pleasure. Where's, Steve, where's my man Stephen A. today? Where you at, young man? New York City. Oh, boy. He's in the apple. He's, right he's in front of the town, painting it red.